Welcome to Training Churches. I'm your host, Chris Honeycutt, lead consultant and founder of Training Churches. We're a ministry partner to over 300 churches, ministries, and faith-based nonprofits. The purpose of this program is to encourage and give support to local pastors and the churches that they lead. We're here to be a trusted friend and resource that they can rely on. On today's show, we'll be talking about ministry mentors. It goes without saying that church ministry is one of the most stressful, underpaid, and underappreciated career paths that one can take these days. The challenges that pastors and church leaders face are unique and complex. Oftentimes, it can be difficult to navigate through them. You know, maybe you can relate. It seems like there are many decisions that pastors make that will win them support with one crowd while making enemies with another. Bible colleges and seminaries are great, but they don't adequately equip ministers with what they need to work smarter, not harder, and stay in the game longer. Some studies have speculated as many as 1,700 pastors and church leaders leave the ministry each month. 50% of those who start in ministry don't last more than five years. Only one out of 10 ministers retire as a minister. 30% of pastors' marriages end in divorce. 90% of pastors say that they feel ill-equipped, undertrained, or unqualified. 70% of pastors say that they don't have any close friends that they can confide in. This is where having a ministry mentor or coach comes into the picture. You know, the Bible has many examples of mentorship. Jesus is the most obvious one here in that he poured himself into 12 men, not just teaching them, but doing life together. We see in the book of Acts where Barnabas was a mentor to Paul when Paul was a new believer. Later, they were sent together as missionaries into Cyprus. The Apostle Paul became a great leader and authored 14 books of the New Testament. Then we see later on that Paul was a mentor to Timothy and described Timothy as being like-minded with him in his commitment to serving God. Their relationship was so strong that Paul called it a father-son relationship. We see in other parts of the Bible where in Ecclesiastes 4, this is something maybe you've heard before at a wedding, but it applies here as well. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Proverbs 27, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And this is one of my favorites, Proverbs 15, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. And there's plenty more where that came from. The point is, it's a biblical principle to seek out those who can pour into you as you pour into others. You do so much of that already, but remind yourself, you can't run on empty. At the end of the day, you're still a human being. Part of our inherent needs is that of relationships. Who do you have in your corner? Outside of your time with the Lord, where does your encouragement come from? Who can help you navigate the storms that your ministry faces? You know, on the way here to the studio today, we got rerouted by Google Maps. You know, we, we don't use a GPS necessarily to know where we're going. We kind of know where we're going already. We use a GPS to anticipate crashes and traffic, roadblocks. And that's what a good ministry mentor can do for you. Only you can know who that could look like in your life. Let's hear more about this from Dr. Joseph Dutton, pastor of the Epicenter Church in Forest City, North Carolina. 
Hey everybody, I'm so thankful to be able to have this opportunity to join you today on Training Churches with Chris Honeycutt. Guys, I love Chris Honeycutt. He's a great, great man of God, a great coach, a great mentor, one of the elite in his field of ministry and marketplace. And we're just excited to be able to have this opportunity. Thank you, Chris, for asking us to come on and talk a little bit about mentoring today. And you have chose one of my most favorite subjects on mentoring, mentorship, and coaching. You know, as a preacher, especially a, a Pentecostal preacher, hallelujah, we have not, we grew up not thinking so much about mentorship and coaching. And I think many of us in a lot of circles that we grew up in, especially denominational circles, if you grew up like I did, I grew up in the Assemblies of God, you grew up in uh, circles and denominations and churches where it was more about the preaching, the preaching, the preaching, the preaching. And don't get me wrong, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Preaching, God chose it. It's foolishness, but God chose it. And it's very important for the believer's life. It's very important for uh, the Christian's life. Church is extremely important. But one of the things we missed is the power of coaching and the power of mentorship. Of, men, of being mentored and mentoring other people. And man, I just, you know, this subject is one of the things that just, as God over, over the 30 years of ministry that I've been a part of teaching God's Word, this thing has just been my heartbeat, especially for the last 15 or 20 years. I started writing a book, guys, on ministry and mantles. It's leadership DNA, legacy discovery, and leadership development. I started writing this book, oh man, somewhere around 2009, 2010, I just started taking notes. Some of those things I was taking notes on how to do things, how not to do things, things I've seen, things I've experienced, people I've, I've talked to, people that talked to me, and I just started putting these notes down and these notes became birth, it birthed a book out of me called Ministry and Manuals. 2009, 2010 was quite a while ago. It took me that long to finally sit down and I wrote this book last year and got it published. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about the premise of this book. One of the scriptures that really comes to me and speaks to me regarding mentoring and mentorship and coaching, I find in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now, I wrote one of the chapters of my book called Legacy Letter. And this is one of Paul's legacy letters he's writing to his son or his, the one he's mentoring. And he tells him this, and this is so important, you've got to grab this, in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. All things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. I think one of the greatest things about mentoring, mentorship, and about coaching is being able to take what's imparted to you and given to you and, and give that to another generation. I was recently teaching here at the studios on a Tuesday night. We have classes here at Dominion Studios on a Tuesday night here at the church. And I was teaching about how weak leadership has imparted that weakness to the next generation. And we went from weak leadership to weaker leadership. And then that weaker leadership has diluted and poured down and watered down things and poured it into another generation. And now we have in our generation, excuse me, but I think one of the weakest generations. I think we need to see the same authority and power and strength and love and care and faith and compassion that the early church had. And I think maybe because we don't see all of that, one of the reasons we don't see all that is because we've forgotten the power of strong coaching and strong leadership pouring into strong leaders. You know, Jesus said this. He said, pray for, he didn't say pray for the harvest. He said, pray for laborers to go into the harvest. And I, I've started a new series called Lead here at the church, at the ministry. And I really do believe that when Jesus said, pray for laborers, he was saying, pray for or search out for leaders. 
I think we have an obligation to search for leaders, and I think we have an obligation to search for leaders that, number one, that we can pour into, and number, and number two, leaders who can pour into us. I often tell people, don't receive teaching from someone that's not teachable. I'm going to say that again. Refuse to receive teaching from someone that's not teachable, and don't worship with someone who doesn't worship. But anyway, that's another sermon. I love this scripture in 2 Timothy, this love letter, this legacy letter from Timothy to, from Paul to Timothy. He says, Timothy, the things you've heard of me, now you've got to take those and commit those to other men who will be able to teach others also. It's so important to develop a legacy with what you have. What you have is more important than you. I'm going to say that again. What you have is more important to you. It's important, number one, to make sure you have someone speaking and imparting to your life and keep pouring into you because if you don't, you're going to run dry. And number two, you have to pour that out to someone else. It's not enough to keep it in you. You've got to pour it out to somebody else. And once you pour it out, you need to be poured back into. So one of the greatest elements in life that we're missing is the element of mentorship, being mentored and mentoring others. It's not enough just to be mentored. We have to learn how to mentor others. I often think about the scripture found in Exodus 18 where Jethro wasn't a part of those uh, wonderful children of Israel that were captivated, captive, enslaved in Egypt. And uh, how Moses and Jethro came together after the deliverance of God's people. And, and Jethro came up to see what was going on and Moses greeted him with a kiss and, and started telling him how God had brought him out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they were excited to see one another. It was a family reunion. The next day, Jethro comes to see Moses and Moses is sitting in his seat, you know, and he's, he's judging things. He's praying for people. He's praying for people, uh, runny nose. He's praying for broke bones. He's praying and counseling people with their marriage. He's talking to people who, who, their, who their friend next door didn't look at them right. You know, it's church stuff. Uh, somebody sing their song. Somebody sat in their seat. Somebody hurt their feelings. Somebody was offended, and he was just, you know, sitting there and doing what pastors do. And um, he was doing it from morning till night, from morning to night. He was praying for their one-eyed squirrel. He was praying for their three-legged dog. He's praying for their children. He's praying for their finances. He's praying for, the, he was going to the hospital. He was cutting the grass. He's doing everything we try to do. And Jethro saw that and Jethro went, oh my goodness, Moses is going to kill himself. I've got to teach this boy, his son, son-in-law, I've got to teach him the power of mentorship. And he begins to pour into him. He talks, he pulls him aside, says, Moses, what, look, I love this phrase, what are you doing to the people? Look, I want to tell you this, if you are not being mentored by someone and learning how to do ministry correctly, I know you got a gift, I know you're anointed, but we have to learn how to do ministry correctly. And Moses' father-in-law was a mentor or a life coach to him, telling him, what are you doing to this people? You're going to kill this people, number one. And number two, you're going to kill yourself. He told him, Moses, you'll surely wear away doing this. And so Moses started praying, and God gave Moses a plan. He said, Moses, I want you to choose out 70 men among the people. And there's some qualifications about those men. Choose out 70 men and begin to pour yourself, put your spirit on them. Time fails me in this little segment today on training churches. And again, I thank you for the opportunity. But time fails me to talk about Moses' spirit on those 70. Time fails me to talk about how Elisha asked Elijah for a double portion of his spirit. I'm thankful for my daddy. My dad was a wonderful man. Over 30 or 40 ministers have gone out in ministry because of his mentoring and coaching and impartation to them. And now many of us, people like Chris, are pouring into others and pouring into your life because someone mentored us, someone coached us, someone spoke into our lives. And now, like Paul told Timothy, the things you've heard of me, Tell someone else about it. Hey guys, I appreciate you. I didn't have long, and I'm one of them long-winded preachers, so I had to get it out quick. 
get the book, Ministry and Mantles. It'll be a blessing to your ministry. It'll be a blessing to your people. It's, you can find it at drdutton.org or real soon, just in a few weeks, the ebook will be out on Amazon. You can download it there. DrDutton.org, the book is Ministry and Mantles. And for all of you right here watching on Training Churches, you can put in a code and save 15% off of that. It's right there on the screen behind me. I hope you can see it. 15 off. And you can save 15% off the book just for watching this program. Hey, connect with us on Dominion TV. We love you. See you next time. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Pastor Dutton. We'll be right back. Since 2015, Training Churches has served over 300 churches, ministries, and nonprofits with leadership training, consulting, and creative services. If your church is experiencing challenges, we would love to have the opportunity to help address them. Visit our website to learn more at www.trainingchurches.com. Welcome back. On today's team member spotlight, we get to hear from Shane McKenzie and Tom Simpson. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Training Church's Team Member Spotlight segment of our show. Today, I'm joined by Tom Simpson. Tom, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're glad that you're here. We're talking about something that uh, I know you've got some experience with, Tom, and, and that has to do with coaching and mentoring, particularly as it relates to pastors and other church leaders. And I'm curious, Tom, for you, why is it important for a pastor to have a mentor or a coach? Well, I think for anybody in in ministry and to have a uh, uh, a mentor early on in their uh, ministry is very important because mentor is somewhat like uh, discipleship. It's somebody that's uh, a little bit further down the road and through experience and their knowledge that can lead you and so that you uh, can gain from what they've already have have learned. Uh, then accountability partners are also important. Accountability partners are somebody that you can get open and real with, and you can uh, somebody that can ask you the the tough questions. A having a, a coach combines those two things and goes a little bit further. And coaching is a very much a collaborative effort, and it's more of a peer to peer. Oftentimes with discipleship or mentoring, there is a, uh, a superior to inferior relationship. And, but with, the, with uh, coaching, you are actually two peers that are coming alongside and uh, kind of trying to discover and what needs to be discovered in that person's life. And uh, sometimes it's, it's looking for answers to particular problems, but it goes more than just problem solving, but problems do get solved. It uh, also is good for attaining goals, but uh, it's more than just that. And so in coaching involves just really kind of a, an awareness and uh, working on the choices that, uh, that, that you need. Then sometimes it's that fork in the road in which pastors come to and oftentimes they don't feel like they can turn uh, to anyone within their congregation and they don't feel that they can even turn to other pastors in their community and so a life coach is is very uh is, is very much needed in the pastorate that's good tom i i personally have benefited from both mentors and coaches as well as accountability partners and I, i'm curious for you was there were there one or two people early on in ministry who made an impact for you? And if so, how? Absolutely. I, I was blessed with, um, and the pastor of our, my church started out discipling me. And then after going off to seminary and he called me back and I was his associate pastor and I, we worked at two different stints together for over 20 years hmm. and he poured his life into me and from, allowing me to be a fly on his wall in the way that he studied. And then also every time that um, he would 
have a small errand or a short trip, he would ask me to come along. And that was before cell phones and back when you could actually get away from in all the distractions. And it was just the two of us in a confined area. At at the same time, I've also benefited from a, uh, a life coach. Uh, I've got a, a friend in Colorado that is in, uh, his, his job is a, a life coach, and we have known each other for and going on 25 years. And uh, it started out as a friendship, then he went on to become a life coach. I went on to become in a pastor, and we ended up, still to this day, I check in and uh, probably every other week, and we, we get together and, and have a session together. That's great. That's great, Tom. Thanks for sharing that. I'm thinking through just some of my own experiences. I've watched other people in ministry over 25 years now. And one of the things that I've noticed is this, this reality of some pastors or church leaders living alone. And what I mean is it seems like that there's a bit of isolation that happens when you're in one of these strategic ministry roles. And I'm, I'm just wanting to know what can a coach do for a pastor or another church leader who's feeling isolated right now? I think that's, uh, that happens way too often. And I think and part of the reason why that happens is expectations and expectations, both internal and external and pastors in fear, uh, not living up, to others' expectations, and that expectation that so oftentimes is is either uh, real or imagined is that everybody has to be perfect, mm. and to uh, pastors feel like they have to deliver the perfect sermon, the uh, they have to have the perfect family and the perfect wife that can do everything from play the piano to <laughs> lead, lead a Bible study, and that you have to have the perfect children and that. Uh, they can never make a mistake. And so uh, in the stresses and uh, concerns that, that carry over to every aspect of, of their life, and it, even they don't feel be, that they can even be real with anybody, and especially within the church, because everybody, in, they feel, are judging them and are holding them into that standard of perfection. And uh, so I mean, things that I try to do is I try to do uh, specifically two things. I try to create uh, an environment for the pastor that is using me as a coach, and I try to uh, create a relationship. And when we talk about environments in a safe place, mm -hmm. so often people don't feel that they have a safe place that they can uh, and can come to and 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 get real and and to part of that environment that it's it's important to let everybody know and, and especially the pastors to know that it's conf everything that's said is confidential mm -hmm. and the the tv ad what happens in vegas stays in vegas what happens inside the and coaches and relationship is something that stays and secure and safe uh, building trust in, is uh, an environment that needs to take place, mm -hmm. and that takes time. And but over that time, to know that um, that results will happen, that things can take place, that and uh, things can be said, things can take place, that and can be a process. So often, uh, pastors are expected and to have the instantaneous answers and for their uh for people around them and i want to have and a place that based on truth speaking and that people can actually say what they they think rather than try to couch it in political correctness or or those kind of things and also in truth seeking and that's where i think um oftentimes in 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 some counseling and some uh, other forms, they don't give room for the Holy Spirit to move. And so, working within uh, past, working with pastors in that capacity, oftentimes people are looking for a quick method, and uh, and they they leave the Holy Spirit out of it. And so, I think that's very important. I also said that I, I try to create a, a 
an environment where a friendship and relationship can take place. And knowing that you actually care, knowing that in every individual, every pastor is unique and they have their own circumstances and situations that they're dealing with and trying to and understand in each of those. Uh, trying to, again, and be open and honest. And that's one of the things that it's, it's very important for me to be that with and the other pastor, but it's also in that environment that they know that they can say things and it stays there. And so that they can create that same open and honest dialogue with me. Yeah, that's good. I think in that kind of an environment, you get, uh, you get to see the real person and be able to help them make some positive changes to be able to get more of the results that they're looking for. I know, Tom, that you're helping pastors, and I'd like for you to tell the folks who are watching today how it is that training churches can help them as well. If they're, if they're resonating with what we're talking about today, what could training churches do to help? Well, in training churches, and uh, we have a professional staff that, and they all want to try to create that kind of environment for the pastor. They want to also and build a relationship with them. Uh, pastors can get a hold of us by reaching us at training churches and we set up our uh, meetings and sessions with the pastors we can do it in person we can um, uh, also do it via Skype or Zoom or and WhatsApp uh, we can also do it through phone calls and it's it's one of those we make ourselves available and to the pastor and that's so important and time we we recognize time is uh, a valuable commodity and we will try to fit in uh to to their schedule so they can reach us again i think you're going to give some more information on how to get a hold of us at training churches mm -hmm. yeah that's right if if you're watching today and you believe now is the time for you to be able to have a coach or a mentor come alongside you, someone to help you be able to navigate maybe some of the decisions that you've been wrestling with. The way that you could get in touch with Tom or other members on our team is to visit trainingchurches.com. Let us know a little bit about you and we'll reach out and get connected. Tom, thanks so much for what you shared today. This has been really beneficial. I appreciate you taking the time with us. Thanks guys. For this week's weekly wisdom, we hear from Zig Ziglar. He says, don't let negative and toxic people rent space in your head. Raise the rent and kick them out. You know, life is far too short to allow negative people to control your life. This is why you need ministry mentors, coaches, and friends who will encourage you and lift you up, but also keep you accountable. They will give you much needed wisdom and insight, but more than that, they'll help you process better. At Training Churches, we'd love to have the opportunity to help you with one of our many John Maxwell team members who can come alongside you and add value to your life, your ministry, and more. That's it for now. Join us next time as we help your church extend its reach. God bless.